Good evening and welcome to the Battle Cats Beginner's Guide. This guide is on Into the Future Chapter 3, making your way through most of it save for the last two levels, which will be in a separate video. This is about preparing yourself as best you can for completing this chapter. And there's a lot of things to take note of because it's a very difficult chapter. So, a few of the prerequisites, the things that you're expected to have before you come into this, because this video is part of a series of guides. First of all, you pretty much unquestionably need to have full superior treasure in Empire of Cats. It has a stacked effect throughout the game with other treasures that you get. Really, no excuse for not having it. You're also expected to have full superior treasures pretty much on Into the Future Chapter 1 and 2. I say pretty much because the missing ones I have here are related to energy recovery time and energy total, which won't help you to do better in the level, but anything unit related, enemy health related, ability related, you will need to be on an equal plane. Now we'll talk about the treasures for Into the Future Chapter 3 more specifically, but my advice is get them superior as you are going along the chapter. This is especially important for the first stages because it rapidly gets more difficult. And actually, if you're spending your time getting superior treasures to start off with, you're putting yourself in good stead because you get an XP for upgrading, etc. This guide also comes after completing all of the craze stages as part of this guide. So, in its most basic foundational form of how to do these levels, and I will discuss alternatives, you will need the crazed cat, the crazed wall cat, crazed gross cat, crazed bird cat, crazed whale cat, crazed dragon cat, and crazed titan cat. Now, the most notable units that you can easily substitute are meat shields. If you find something that costs 75, like the crazed cat, or 150, like the crazed wall, you can probably use it in their place. Just remember that they probably won't be as good, so you will have a harder time, but it's kind of a lot easier to think of a substitute for these two meat shielding units. I talk about crazed being at the foundation of what you need because this is a no gacha guide. This is for people who have been so unlucky to have not got any useful gacha units in their roles. So they haven't got any anti-alien units. Pretty much any anti-alien unit will really help you on Into the Future and is something you should definitely have in your lineup. A good rule of thumb is if the unit outranges the enemy, it's probably going to be useful. In some cases, it might actually be useful if you can just get some damage in anyway, even if it doesn't outrange it. Broadly, if you have an anti-alien unit, you should probably put it in your lineup, especially for the first half of the stages, as will be discussed. The crazed, as we're using them here, are just generally good units with good traits, like big area of effect damage from the crazed UFO, and single shot long range damage from the crazed dragon, which you can stack up. The same is true of these units over here. Bahama is a big part of this. Aruran is a big part of this. You're expected to have got that, and you get that upon completion of Jailbreak Tunnel in the Stories of Legend, and you will have Holy Valkyrie Cat, a very important one here, especially if you don't have any anti-alien units because of its ability to sometimes freeze any type of unit except for metal. And these are what I might refer to as the triple. These three units are very useful here if you don't have any big ticket anti-alien units. However, if you do, it'd be a very good idea to swap them into this strategy because you'll have that big damage and usually long range from such a unit, but also it will be traded against alien. And so you'll have a much easier time. You're expected to have the basic true forms of Eraser Cat, because Eraser Cat at level 20 plus 10 is inordinately better than a Tank Cat at level 20 plus 9. Perhaps even more importantly, Macho Leg Cat. This gains an anti-alien, strong against aliens ability when it gets into its true form, and only when it gets into its true form. If you're going to use Gross slash Legs, you need it in this form realistically. My dragon is level 20 plus 6 but of course it's welcome to have a higher level than that. This is one that I tend to note because it's often used in these levels. People might wonder what level my dragon is and then Jamira cat if you just have titan cat probably don't use it here 
Jumeirah is a true form that's needed if you're going to be using this unit in some of the stages I'll describe where it has a definite tankiness use. Now, looking at this chapter, I think it's best to split it into two in your mind. The first half goes to the Great Abyss in the middle. So before the Great Abyss, you should be working on getting all superior treasure as you go along. You'll see some gaps in here, and these are gaps that don't relate to anti-alien treasure. But you should certainly be getting the crystals that correspond to that, and you'll only be able to actually fully form your first crystal by the time you get to the Great Abyss, and you're expected to have that treasure when we go into the level. There are some general practices to help you through the first levels, and that is to bring, if you don't have any better anti-alien units with you, the triple, as discussed, crazed legs for waves, crazed UFO, it can form a brilliant stack of excellent huge air of effect damage, and dragon, which you can also stack and does a different kind of very safe range damage. And I'd also recommend these four meat shields, the two basic units, Hopefully, you've got a Razor Cat in its true form. You can also use Dragon Cat in favour of Crazed Dragon Cat. They're almost exactly the same in purpose. And if you have its true form King Dragon, you can use that. Although the advantage of this true form isn't as clear cut as with other ones. King Dragon has a longer recharge time but does more damage. So if you want something that's more spammable, you'll want to use Dragon Cat instead. More expendable. But as general practice, this is probably a good generalist lineup for you to weave your anti-alien units into. Now some useful tips to take into levels are if you're not using a rich cat, to upgrade your worker cat once as you go into the level, and then get a Bahama afterwards. This is a sort of running theme in Into the Future, where when levels start quickly, you can usually get both of these things done before the enemy arrives, and then that gives you enough firepower to get started, and enough wallet capacity to make the most of the bunnies that the enemy gives you when you've killed it with your Bahama and protected meat shielding. As is always the case, make sure to protect your units with meat shielding. There's one exception to that in Into the Future, which we'll look at as we go into the second half of it. But generally, you're putting meat shields whenever you can in front of your big ticket damaging units and your stacking mid-price units. That should, if you're getting your superior treasure as you're going along, help you to do these levels and do them again and again, or if you have loads of treasure radars, use them to get superior treasure in these stages as you are going along, and to eventually lead you to the Great Abyss with this treasure, the Aqua Crystal, 100% superior. This means that aliens in real terms have a lot less health and are a lot more manageable than they would have otherwise been. You cannot actually get the second treasure until you've beaten all the levels except for Floating Continent and Moon. I do not have a cat base defense increased treasure, doesn't particularly matter. My cat cannon power is not upgraded, which means the charge is a lot faster than most people's cat cannon. For that reason, I will try not to use it as often as I'm able to, because you won't be able to use it as quickly. For the rest of this video also, I will not have Cat Cannon Attack Power increased, which you would technically have a benefit of if you've upgraded your Cat Cannon Power. And the treasures that increase ability effects against Black, Red, Floating, and Angel are 0% also. Now, you can't actually make use of these treasures before the Great Abyss. All of the final levels to complete the treasure come after that stage, but it's really important that you get them as soon as you can, because these treasures will really help you for dealing with the many different types of enemy that dominate the stages past the Great Abyss, which is just alien. And so with that, we look at the Great Abyss, which may seem like a scary and difficult level, but needn't be if you've got your treasure superior up until this point. And it's best to think of this level basically as Empire of Cats Chapter 3 Moon. There's a big old bun bun in it, and you're trying to stack things like dragons and legs, and loads of meat shielding in front of it to be able to defeat that bun bun. The only difference is, in the alien Bun Bun, the Bun Bun symbiote, is that it can give wave attacks off. 
and they will decimate what you've got, essentially. And so there is kind of an element of luck of how much it waves that goes into this level. Luckily, it's a continue stage, which means that you can force close and try again. There's a video on force closing in the guide series if you're not familiar with the term. And that means that if you do get unfairly waved and all your stuff destroyed and it looks like Bun Bun's gonna defeat you, just simply force close, go back into the stage and try again without wasting any of your energy. This is the strategy for giving it a go. Much the same kind of format as you might want to adapt for most of the Into the Future levels. We're going to have Crazed Legs Cat in there as well. Both of the dragons for the stacking that we discussed and the triple. You could, for example, use Macho Legs in here instead, given that it has an anti-alien ability. The waves of the Crazed Legs Cat really help to deal with the peons around, and so that's why we'll be using it here. But use your filter and use your thoughts for what you want to swap out and in. So you don't need any items for this stage. Items could benefit you, such as a CPU, so you can take your mind off the level while the CPU does it for you, but there's no need of it, so let's go straight into the Great Abyss. The start off of this battle is very forgiving, just a Shibalian and maybe a few other peons which you can stall. The Bun Bun Symbiote will only come out on base hit, so as long as you stay away from the base, you don't need to worry at all. Keep the enemies away from your base with the minimal units, so that you can upgrade your worker cat to max and have yourself in the best possible place for the battle. That's why if you're using a CPU, you'll only need to bring the CPU with you, because you can get your worker cat up to max without any bother. And there we go, max worker cat. So we're gonna head forward with this towards the base, and I'd advise bringing along Valkyrie Cat with you. Because it has that chance to freeze the Bun Bun, this is probably gonna be your best bet if you can only afford one of your units to stop the Bun Bun in its tracks. If you do that, as long as it doesn't wave unfairly, you really should have a rather easy time of it. And then by the time the Bun Bun comes out, you should have enough monies to get all of your triple. And there we go. It's a 30% chance for Valkyrie to freeze these units. So don't be sad if it doesn't do that. In fact, it freezing twice in a row is statistically very unlikely indeed. This can help you just keep the Bun Bun in stasis if the proc works. Bahama is useful to have along to do damage knockbacks to it. And then Aruran can use its ability to knock it back. Be meat shielding all of this time and consistently. That's why the CPU can be useful here. And this is pretty much all you do for the rest of the battle. You're just watching out to see if Bun Bun waves you unfairly or not. And if it doesn't wave you unfairly, the level is pretty simple and straightforward. There was a wave there and you could see everything was damaged knockback. And so that is gonna have a negative impact on it all. And you can imagine that if Bun Bun does another wave shortly afterwards, it's gonna cause us a lot of trouble, and in fact did dispense with my units without even needing to do another wave. Now, a good thing is that you can actually just use four meat shields and stackers like the dual dragons to keep Bun Bun where it is, assuming that it doesn't wave you. And then Valkyrie should have come off recharge time and you can use that to poke at Bun Bun again. As I said, this really is a matter of whether it waves unfairly or not. The waves are a significant, possibly the most significant part of its offensive attack power. And because that's based on chance, it's just how the run goes, which dictates whether you're going to be fine for beating it or not. So as you can see, Bun Bun's getting quite close to the base, but also our Bahama is now off recharge time. So we can do the same thing as we were planning to do before. All our meat shields out, dragon stacked there, and that can keep the Bun Bun where it is so long as it doesn't wave you unfairly. Valkyrie's come off recharge time again. It does die quickly, but it also does come back quickly, and you can usually make enough monies to be able to have it out. And then we can also get a ruin out as well. It might not be advisable to have all out at the same time. It definitely gives you a sense of safety and repeatedly knocking it back or freezing it is very useful. But then if it does wave all of your units at the same time, it can put you in a sticky spot. So if you find that happening to you, you might want to use one of the big ticket triple at a time. But as you can see, we have managed to do it there. And that is the Great Abyss completed. So now that the Great Abyss is complete, I'm going to run through a few notable stages and some little tips for them. Our first stage after the Great Abyss to look at is Egypt, where I recommend bringing crazed legs for crowd control. 
In Ghana, there are some pretty strong red enemies, so I'd recommend bringing Crazed Whale for the Ginger Snatches. Island Cat is a suitable alternative. I don't mention it as absolutely needed for Into the Future Chapter 3, but it will certainly help you against red enemies, especially in Mexico later on. In Argentina, the technique that might benefit you is to lure and push through. This is something we've talked about in previous guide on the stories of legend, which I will put in an I for you. And the principle basically is to get the enemies as close to your base as they can go without damaging it and then push back through all of them. And the reason for doing that is because if you try to fight them at their base where they're stronger, you just get overrun and you'd be defeated. At your base, you're the strongest because your units are ready to fight in the battle immediately from being spawned. And so luring will help you to get the power you need to push back through those enemies and get to the end of the stage successfully. In Jamaica, try and upgrade your worker cat to level 3 immediately upon going into the level and then get in a Bahama. You can just about do this and it's important to get everything you can out of the worker cat and get that Bahama to start giving yourself some damage and some more monies. And I recommend bringing Valkyrie as well. For Hollywood, also bring Jewel Dragons and upgrade your worker cat once, although Rich Cat is useful to bring into the stage. And employ a principle that's fairly standard across the game, which I'm going to coin here as Bahamut and Protect. Put a Baham out, protect it with everything you've got, and hopefully it will do enough damage to keep you going. Remember, you can force close if it doesn't work out and not waste your energy in trying again. After you've got the monies for it, get Valkyrie after Bahamut, and that will help with crowd control in the level. In Las Vegas, I'd recommend bringing both Titans, and that's another Bahamut and Protect. In Mexico, the anti-red treasure is massively important, I managed to do it without the anti-red treasure, but with great difficulty. Here I'd recommend bringing your crazed whale and island cat for some good anti-red power. And if you have fisherman cat, make sure to team that up with them on the top row to get yourself two cat combos out of it, one of which increases unit defense. Also to that one, bring Valkyrie and Macho Legs and build your worker cat up steadily using the one horns and the shy boy. Bring your Bahama cat and Auroran cat out as early as you can so that you can start off the recharge time in order for you to get them again sooner. Then spam everything and keep spamming everything so CPU is useful here and don't lure in this stage. Alaska is a lure and push through level and for this one you need as much area of effect damage as you can muster. That means bringing crazed UFO if you can, Auroran, Bahama, and Valkyrie to get as much area of effect off on the Angelic Gories, which are very powerful. You need to lure and push through on this one because they are far too powerful to fight at their base. They will just melt through you and get to yours. You need to build up a huge stack and push back through them to be able to win. In Canada, the triple is useful, as is Rich Cat. At the start, make sure to stall to build up your monies if you're not bringing a Rich Cat. Then definitely get Bahama and then build up your monies to get Aruran and Valkyrie with it. And always be meat shielding. Greenland is an incredibly difficult one. I'd recommend bringing a rich cat for sure. At the start, use the Dark Doges and the money from having the rich cat to get yourself an Aruran. And then use a CPU to spam units as efficiently as possible to protect that Aruran. The combination of knockbacks from Macho Leg, Titan, Dragons and Aruran should be able to keep the enemies at bay, but it might take quite a few trial and error runs to get that right. To increase the effectiveness of knockback abilities, put Macho Legs and Crazed Legs together on the top row. That will give you a cat combo that will make those abilities more powerful. New York features a waving enemy, the Elizabeth Page, so make sure to not bring any meat shields for this one. In fact, you'll want dual legs, dual dragons and dual titans if you have the units to be able to do that and to use their tankiness to get hits out on the page as much as you possibly can. It will likely get towards your base, where things are a lot more difficult because the waves are constantly hitting you, but you might well find that you can clutch victory from the jaws of defeat as I managed to here, and once again, you can keep trying over and over again using force closing. Valkyrie, as it attacks quickly, is a good big ticket unit to use here, but because Bahama and Aruran require meat shields around them to work effectively, I'd advise against using those. 
I apologise if there's any sense of disconnect in what I've said here. These streams were done quite a while ago compared to this voiceover being recorded and these are the notes that I have for myself. But hopefully I will have made some sort of good sense out of them and hopefully those will have been some useful tips for those levels. But of course, if you're struggling on any of them, let me know in what way you're struggling, what level you're struggling on, and I shall endeavour to help you. And that does it for the majority of Into the Future Chapter 3. The principle is, and always is, in story mode, to get all of your superior treasures as soon as you can. The concluding video on Into the Future Chapter 3 will look at floating continent and moon separately, as we mentioned. For now, I hope this has been useful to you. I bid you goodbye, and I hope you enjoyed.